Do you need the new Unify Flex Mini 2.5 gigabit switch? Probably not. Should you buy instead the $29 Flex Mini? Most likely. And I'll show you why. My name is Bogdan Chaprini, founder of Apex One IT. And first thing to understand is that these utility switches are much different than their larger full rack mountable switches. So obviously first thing is they're much smaller, which could be a benefit, or if you want a rack mount, then it's not really a benefit. But most importantly, it has a lot less switching capability than like your standard layer two, and obviously even less than layer three switches. For example, here we have a Pro Max 16. This is actually a non-POE. But the point is, and I'll show you what the Flex Minis and most of the utility ones miss. So if I select one of the ports and let's say I want to do link aggregation. So the here, no problem, I can select two ports, we can do that, okay? So that's one thing those don't have. And if we click again into this port, so Ethernet port profiles also. So what's important for us, for example, is the LLDP. The smaller ones don't have in the voice VLAN here. They just don't have these settings. But maybe you're okay with not having these functions and you actually want that smaller form factor. You want the new Flex Mini. So the question is, what's new with that 2.5 gig version? First, it's just a tiny bit larger than the regular Flex Mini. And I mean, it's literally just like the size of my MX mouse here. So it's made a little bit wider, slightly longer, but otherwise it's basically that same kind of small form factor you might be used to. And I would say it has a better layout. So this is the Flex Mini. It had the USB type C input for power in the back. So almost the same as that new 2.5, except the 2.5 has all on one side. So it's easier to mount it in one place you know, all your ports, no matter if you're using PoE in or not, it's all on one side, just like it shows here. The top of it, for example, could be up against like the bottom of your desk and that's not an issue. The only thing is the reset port is still underneath it, but that's okay. You shouldn't need to reset it. Otherwise, it's basically very similar than the 2.5 gigabit ports, the five ports that you have, four for downlinks, one for uplink with PoE in, just like the regular Flex Mini and the USB Type-C for power optionally as well. And probably can even use the same adapter. It's five volt, one amp, five watts, right? And you can disable that blue LED indicator right there. If you go to your unified dashboard, select it, go to settings, and right up here, you can turn off that LED. I don't know how helpful that is because the ethernet ports, those LEDs will still be on, obviously, if there's traffic happening there. The regular Flex main, the one gig version, it also had this LED option, but what you might notice is different here, which is really helpful, is that, that it does have RSCP and all the other options with it, which the Flex Mini does not. And even the thing the Switch Ultra switches don't have that as well. So that's awesome. And you can do priority here, which can be very helpful if you have a lot of switches and things go wrong. This is a good way to set priority. So it has it by default. You're typically fine with that and even the global switch settings, but it does have this and the priority, which is different from the Flex Mini. Everything else here with insights, you know, naming the device, overview, is basically all very similar, same kind of stuff. The other important difference here, so if we go into port manager for this 2.5 switch, let's go here to port two, for example, just like with the Flex Mini one gig version, we can set a VLAN here, but what's unique and same as those larger switches is it also has tag VLAN management. So not just allow all, but you can go custom. And let's say we also want to allow voice on this one. You know, if our VoIP phone is tagged for the voice VLAN, it'll pass through here as well, even though we have a different VLAN assigned here. So that's awesome. And I guess just for those two reasons, it's not just another switch. It kind of is an upgrade to the regular Flex Mini, even if you don't want the 2.5 gigabit networking. For those two reasons, if you really need them, then yes, this is a upgrade to the regular one gig Flex Mini. And while these are nice features to have, the question is, I mean, if you need these features, obviously you should probably get this new switch. But otherwise, the main reason you will get the switch is if you need 2.5 gigabit networking. Now, other than that, should you get that Flex Mini 2.5G? And it really comes down to whether or not you need 2.5G networking, all right? And let me help you understand if you need it or not. I would say that you might benefit from it if you have something like a NAS on your network, so network attached storage, right? You're accessing files from there, especially large files, and maybe you're a home user or just single user, kind of like a home business setup. You will still benefit from getting the 2.5 switch here. This is depicted right here and just connecting into there your computer and the NAS. Okay, so as long as these are going through the same switch, you don't have a bottleneck anywhere, you're going through 2.5 gigabit, and you could, you know, if you're accessing large files, you can see a benefit there, and faster file transfer speeds. 
right? So these are, by the way, in gigabit, not gigabytes. Gigabytes, you could get your 2.5 gigabit, for example, and divide it by 10, roughly speaking, just to get a good idea of how fast your files will transfer or maximum how fast your files will transfer. So at 2.5 gigabits divided by 10, you're looking at 250 megabits per second. And so if you had a one gig connection here, you're looking at 100 megabits per second. It's kind of like the fastest you'll get in kind of real scenarios. And notice right now, we're actually just talking about your local area network, so your LAN. I'm not even talking about this yet, what your router or gateway is. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so another reason why you might want the 2.5 gigabit switch is if you have something like this set up. Okay, so you have multiple computers, they're only on one gig, but your NAS is on 2.5 gig. So if everyone's trying to access, hit this NAS at the same time, although they won't get that 2.5 gig without an upgrade, but because everyone's hitting on it, that traffic can be kind of split up and you'll see just faster transfer speeds for each end user here. Okay, so you could benefit like this. And again, notice I'm just talking about everything surrounding just the switch. And so what that practically means is here, for example, I have a UCG Ultra. So it has its LAN ports are only one gig, but that doesn't matter for here. If you actually had this device, you can still get that benefit. If this was a 2.5 gigabit, you know, you bought a little dongle, upgrade your network card, you would still get that faster speeds here locally because we're just talking about local traffic. When this is communicating, when your computer's communicating to a NAS, if it's going, it's just going through this switch, it's not going back up through the gateway. Well, it's not for accessing those files. And if we would deploy something like this, we actually just use Synology network attached storage devices. And unfortunately, they don't have you know built-in 2.5. They have one gig or you buy the 10 gig version. And what's important with that, if this was a 10 gig network adapter in there, that's still okay as long as... You know, you just need to check the specs of whatever you're using. Make sure it can still negotiate at that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet level. So some of the older Synology devices, you know, they couldn't do that. They could only do one gig or 10. And maybe some other older devices you have laying around, same thing for that, some older enterprise devices. So just make sure that if you are upgrading like your NAS to 10 gig, you want to utilize it only at 2.5, make sure they can actually communicate 2.5. Speaking of internet now, so outside of your local area network, Let's say from your internet service provider, you're paying for two gig, but you have a UCG Ultra. I mean, first of all, I'll probably get a UCG Max, but let's say you have that, you notice now your uplink from your 2.5 gigabit switch is only one gig because these LAN ports are only one gig. So this is your bottleneck right here, your one gig connection. Your devices down here, like even though say this is 2.5 gig, your NAS will never be able to utilize this for internet purposes, for reaching out to the internet, even though you're paying for two gig because you have this bottleneck here. So if you actually need your devices to communicate to the internet at 2.5 or just greater than one gig, right? And you're paying for more than 1G internet, like in this example, then you do need a gateway. You need to make sure your whole path to it is not limited somewhere. So in this example with the UCG Max and the Flex Mini 2.5G, you'll have a 2.5 gig uplink and to the internet and now you have no bottleneck, right? So you want to make sure that happens and even here in my example, so this is again, the Flex Mini 2.5, you'll see, right, it highlights that my uplink, and it's actually to a UCG Max, right there, UCG Max, it is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection. So just make sure if you actually connected everything properly, it would be in this uh, lighter blue color here. So if you connected your NAS, let's say to port two, it should also be in that blue color. Now, kind of the other side of the coin, why would you not want 2.5 gigabit networking? Well, if, if you don't have any of these devices or you don't plan to upgrade them to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, then there's no point. You're not, you're not going to benefit here at all. So not from multiple devices connected, none of that, because all of these, you know, they'll be at 1G, so it doesn't matter. And also if your internet speeds, for example, right, are 1G or less, and, you know, let's say you don't have this set up like this, you just have computers, they're all in 1G, 1 gigabit connections, there's no point for this 2.5 gigabit Flex Mini. You'll be good to go just with that $29 Flex Mini Switch at one gig, which by the way, they kept the price. This is like their Flex Mini $29 one has been like that for years. So this, this is like Costco's uh, $1.50 hot dogs, okay? So I'm sure that's one gig Flex Mini is not going anywhere. It's still a great switch. You can still get them in three, even five packs, which makes them even a better deal. So in short, why should you get the Flex Mini 2.5 gig? Well, if you want to establish a local area network that can utilize that, you know, those speeds, you're really hitting your maximums and you just need more throughput, more bandwidth. Or if you're paying for higher internet and you actually are also accessing 
you know, large files via the internet, then go ahead, pick up the Flex Mini 2.5 gigabit. The only thing I feel like is missing or just maybe would be nice to add is for Unified to add another smaller switch that has PoE. So maybe at least two ports that have PoE plus at 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, because then we can actually use, you know, no PoE injectors. We can, you know, get one of the Wi-Fi access points, the U7s, to get that full speed at 2.5 gigabit. So that would be cool, you know, something like the Light 8 PoE, but, you know, obviously I would expect it to cost more. It would have PoE plus, maybe just two ports, like I'm saying, that would be sweet. So I'm, I'm hoping for that one still, but otherwise I am going to be utilizing this 2.5 gig Flex Mini. And if you're picking one up and you're feeling brave, let us all know who is watching this video, why you're picking one up, how you're going to use it, maybe give us some ideas, that would be helpful. And if you're not sure if you need one, just go ahead, ask it in the comments. I'll try to respond or even someone else can help you out as well. If this video helped you out, maybe I saved you 20 bucks. Please subscribe, like this video. I'll have everything linked for the tech specs, obviously to this product in the video description. Thanks for watching. Take care.